So basically what we've just determined here is that the electric field vectors are all going to be parallel to this x-axis. The electric field vectors will all be parallel to this x-axis. Now, there, there, there can also be electric field vectors inside of the slab. There can be electric field vectors inside of the slab. Um, but those will also have to be parallel to this x-axis um, um, based on the symmetry argument that we gave before. We can't, the electric field vectors can't be pointing um, uh, up or down or left or right because uh, there would be, uh, because of symmetry. They can only be pointing parallel or anti-parallel to the x-axis. As they told us, the electric field must be zero when you're exactly in the middle of the slab, because then the, 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 the portion that's in front would cancel out the portion that's behind. OK, so then we could look at part A, for example. Um, and we just saw that the direction of the electric field is constant along one surface. It's always perpendicular. Oh, do you have a copy of this? Choices there and see if any of those make sense to you. Yeah, so for example, this might be one side of the slab here, the front face. But we just said that the electric field, all the electric field vectors are perpendicular to this face, parallel to the x-axis. So those, all the electric field directions would be constant. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as we're focusing just on electric field vectors on the surface, they should have equal magnitude as well, again, from symmetry. Um, so the answer would be B. Okay. So uh, it's hard to draw the electric field vectors, but they would look something like there's electric field vectors emerging from each point here uh, parallel to the x-axis. Now they also asked us, what is the angle that the field makes with the surface that is perpendicular to the x direction? Hmm. So for example, this, what is the, makes with the surface of the slab? Oh, OK. No, this is straightforward. So they're just asking, yeah, what angle is this electric field making with this face? Because this, this front face here is, is perpendicular to this x axis. So um, what angle is the electric field making with this front face? That's right. They wanted the answer to be in terms of pi, so that would be pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. All right, so those are the things we'd already figured out, um, that these are going to be perpendicular to the front face, parallel to the x-axis. The x-axis is perpendicular to the front face. Does that make sense? OK. okay. All right, now what we've done so far is we've talked about the stuff that's above the arrow here in your handout, how to figure out the direction of the electric field based on the source charges. And again, I'm assuming here that this is uh, positive charge density. If it was negative charge density, then all these electric field vectors would be pointing into the slab. Now what we need to do in part C is find the magnitude of the electric field. Um, well, for that we would use the ideas that are under the arrow here in your handout. Um, 
Well, one thing we can't do is we can't just use this formula. Because remember, this is, was for point charges or for spherical symmetry. Instead, we have to go back to Gauss's law. So here we are going back to Gauss's law, and we're going to have to use this to figure out how to figure out the electric field from the source charges. Uh, all right. Well, in this case, I think we just, uh, and so one thing we want to do is draw a Gaussian surface. And we need to draw a Gaussian surface that's going to be symmetrical with respect to the source charge. Um, so what type of Gaussian surface can we draw? Well, when we were working with spherical symmetry, we drew spheres. Um, but a sphere here would not be symmetrical with respect to the surface, because some parts of the sphere would be closer to this than others, and there would be different angles. So a sphere is not a good approach here. Um, one good approach here is just to draw a kind of box through this. Um, that's what they did in this particular problem. So we can try drawing a box. This is going to test my 3D drawing skills. Can we also draw a cylinder? In the yeah. textbook, they do it using a cylinder. Okay. And in the homework, they do it using a box. And all, both of those are going to turn out to be almost exactly the same. To me, it's a little bit more intuitive to use a box because this looks like a box already. But you're right, you could also use a cylinder that's perpendicular to the slab. All right, so um, there's actually a couple of different boxes you could draw here. But I'm going to draw a box that extends out of the front face and behind the back face, if I can. It's not too terrible. All right, so now we have a kind of a box that's extending out the back face and out the front face. This is supposed to be symmetrical, so I'll, um, I should have been trying to draw it so that this height is the same as this height uh, over here. So it's supposed to be a symmetrical box. So this should extend the same distance past the front face that it extends past the back face in the back. Although actually, I don't know if that's too important for this type of problem, but we want to be as symmetrical as possible. Okay, um, now let's think about the, uh, and we want to now figure out the electric flux through all the phases. Well, first of all, can you see that there won't be any electric flux through this top face? Because remember, the electric flux is the flux that's emerging perpendicular to a face. But remember that the electric field lines look like this. So the electric field lines that are emerging are going to be parallel to the top face, not perpendicular, so there won't be any flux through here. And by the same token, there won't be any flux through the sides, because the electric field lines will be parallel to the sides as well. The only face that the electric field lines are perpendicular to is this front face and the back face. There will be electric field lines emerging perpendicular to the front and perpendicular to the back. That's why we had to do so much work to figure out the direction of the electric fields before we could even work on the magnitude here. Okay, so we're only going to have to worry about the front and the back faces. And because we've tried to draw a symmetrical surface, we can assume that the electric field will be uniform and constant everywhere on this front face and everywhere on the back face. Because after all, all of these points are the same distance from the slab. And they all have an infinite amount of slab to their left and an infinite amount of slab to their right, and the same for up and down. So the electric field should be uniform here. This is why it wouldn't be such a good idea to draw, say, a sphere, because that would not necessarily, not all the points there wouldn't be the same distance from the slab, so that would not be so obvious. Okay, um, so we know that the electric field is uniform. So how is this integral going to simplify? We can pull the E out. Good, and then? Good. Good. Except remember that we'll have the area of the front face and the area of the back face. So the total area that the flux is going through is 2n. 
So the total amount of flux here is 2 times E times A. Flux from the, through the front face and the back face. There's no flux through the sides. 